channel. My name is Rachel Ost. If you haven't internet met me before, this video is going to be the start of a, another series of videos that I'm going to be doing and it's going to be to help you guys take better photos. Some of you might not know but I was working as a fashion and beauty photographer for a couple of years before I decided I just didn't want to do that anymore so I do have those skills behind me. I'm going to chuck some images in front of my face like right now. So you can see, um, this is some of my work. My website is rachelloss.com. I'll put that in the description box if you wanted to go have a look at more of my photos. In this particular video, I'm going to be covering how to take better photos on your mobile phone. I've decided I'm going to split it up into a bunch of different videos because otherwise it'd go for like two hours. You'd be bored to death. You would have had to prepare snacks to watch the video. Anyway, so I'm just going to break it up into a few pieces for you. So I'm going to do the mobile phone one. Um, next I'll be doing something along the lines of lighting, then we'll be doing flat lays, then we'll be doing selfies. I'm going to take you guys through a whole heap of stuff so you can improve your photographs. Before I jump into my tips, if you guys do enjoy this video, I would appreciate it so much if you'd give it a little thumbs up because that does help me out as well. So I guess I'm going to direct this photo taking video more in relation to Instagram because Let's face it, you're not going to go and take a professional photo shoot on your phone. That's normally just for Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, that sort of thing. So, what I want to say first is simplify your photos. You don't need tons of stuff going on, unless of course, I mean, you want that. But I find if you're just starting off and you want to take a nice photo, simplify it. If there's heaps of junk in the background, you can get rid of it. Like if you're taking a selfie and then your room is absolutely trash behind you, it's probably not a good look. So. Simplify your background, um, simplify the props. If you're trying to take a flat lay, don't have too much stuff sitting in there. So yeah, remove what you don't need. There's not really a set number of things you should aim to have in a photograph. I guess it just really depends what type of photo you're trying to take. But if you are cluttering up the picture with heaps of stuff like this, heaps of things going on, you haven't really thought about the shot at all, you're just taking a random photo of anything. I mean, that's your prerogative if you want to do that, but I know personally for my Instagram, I like it to look very curated. I want it to be like a mini gallery of sorts. Um, so yeah, what I like to do with that, for example, if I'm taking a photo of my desk, right now there is a hard drive sitting on here and there's some tape sitting on here. I'm going to take those things off the desk because I don't want them in the photograph, if that makes sense. Another point that I really want to make is do not use the built-in flash on your mobile phone. That's just some LED lights. It's absolutely shocking. It'll wash you out so bad. Uh, I really don't like the way it looks. Same goes for cameras that have like a pop-up flash built in. Try to avoid it where you can. It's just not nice light to be using. When it comes to taking photographs, a lot of the time this standard built-in camera doesn't cut it for me. So if I'm backlighting a photograph and there's the window behind me and I'm standing there, I'll pop a picture up as an example, uh, you'll find that with an iPhone it tends to focus on the window and everything else around it becomes very, very dark. And what you want to do with a backlit photo is have that ethereal feeling where the subject is light enough and the background is almost like haloed light. So I like to use an app called Manual. I'll write that somewhere, but the name's pretty easy, Manual, because basically what it does is it gives you some more control over your camera. You get the manual settings. So it has things for your ISO, it has things for your shutter speed, and it has your color temperature or your white balance. Don't be scared if you don't know what any of that is, I'll explain it in just one second. Now on a mobile phone, yes, of course, you can't really adjust all your shutter speed and things like that properly, but at least with this app you do get a lot more control over the image itself. Now if you already know what ISO, shutter speed and white balance are, you can zone out for a little bit, but I'll just, if you don't understand it, I'll give you a really simplified explanation. So ISO is the camera's sensitivity to light. The higher the number of the ISO is, the more light that your camera will pick up. The lower the number is, the darker your image is going to be. With some cameras, depending on how good the camera is, if you push the ISO up too high, that's when you start to see a very grainy image. The next thing I want to quickly explain is your shutter speed. So with your phone, it's not going to make a huge difference. I mean, manual pretends it does, but it doesn't really. On a DSLR, you will see the bigger difference with this one. A slower shutter speed is going to give your image more blur to it if you move the camera. So I'm trying to think of the easiest way to explain it. Basically, it's the speed of how quickly your camera is going to take the photo. If you were taking photos of live action, so sports, dancing, something like that, you'd, you, 
you would usually want to have a pretty quick shutter speed so that your camera can snap it really quickly. If you're taking like a landscape photo and you want to let a lot of light into the camera and you want those beautiful streaky lights going around, that's when you have a slower shutter speed so your camera that is open for longer and it's letting more light in. With the manual app on your phone, it does say that you can adjust the shutter speed. I'm not really sure how much that does in terms of the actual speed of the camera taking a photo, but it does affect how bright or dark your image will be. White balance is probably one of my favorite things. A lot of people always ask how I get my photos so white. That tends to rely on the white balance of the image. So white balance is about eliminating incorrect color casts over your photo. So best way to explain it, if you're taking a photo late afternoon, there's generally quite an orange overcast on the image. If you're taking a photo where it's really cloudy, there might be a blue overcast. So having the correct white balance is going to help bring the whites back to white and the blacks back to black. So the brightness and the color cast of your image are really going to affect the overall feel of it. If you want something that's more like some of my photos, so we're talking white, we're talking bright, then you're going to make sure that your color cast, your white balance is spot on and you're going to make sure that the image is quite bright. If you don't want that feeling, change the settings around, go for whatever you feel like. If you want it quite moody, you're probably going to want to check that white balance and you're going to want to make it maybe darker. I mean, it's totally up to you guys. Just go and play around with the settings and see what you come up with. I thought I'd mention as well because I keep mentioning the app manual. I'm not paid for this video at all. It's just the app that I use. So I thought I'd tell you guys about it. Please don't filter your images. I mean, well, if you want to, go for it, I guess. But I don't like filters because I don't believe in adding automated processes over my images. I guess that's coming from the whole, I was actually taking photos beforehand, like proper photo shoots and stuff. But I don't like filters. So on my mobile phone, if I am doing my post processing, I guess you'd call it, I tend to just use Instagram because I've already got my white balance right. It's already as bright as I want to have it. So on Instagram, I'll go and I'll sharpen it a bit and I'll up the contrast and I might bring the shadows down a little bit. But as far as an actual camera photo goes, I always go with Lightroom and Photoshop or Bridge and Photoshop, something like that. So they're just a few little tips that I have for you when it comes to taking photos on your mobile phone. Uh, don't worry, I will go into more depth and more explanation when it comes to other videos. So like I was saying, I'm going to do one on lighting and I want to do one just on taking selfies and one just on doing flat lays, all of that sort of thing. If you have any other sort of photo requests, let me know what it is and I'll see if I can add it into my list for you. But I've got a few ideas all ready to go. So I will take the time to film those as soon as I can. I really hope you guys enjoyed this photo. I just said, I, I nearly said I hope you guys enjoy the photo. Enjoy your photos. Enjoy this video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch you guys on Instagram or in my next video. Bye.